Story 1 Chapter 1 The Encounter Friday nights were sacred for us, a motley crew of teenagers seeking refuge from the mundanity of suburbia in the neon-lit haven of the local bowling alley. It was our haven, where laughter mingled with the clatter of pins and the scent of cheap pizza hung in the air like a promise of camaraderie. That night started like any other. Jacob, Josh, Mikey, and I sauntered into the alley, our spirits high with anticipation. But as we claimed our lane and laced up our shoes, a shadow fell over our excitement, Creeper Bob, as we fondly dubbed him, prowling the lanes like a specter of discomfort. He's here again, Mikey muttered under his breath, his voice tinged with unease as he nodded towards the lone figure, making his way down the alley. Yeah, I saw him last time too, lurking like some kind of creep, Jacob added, his eyes narrowing in suspicion. But despite our collective wariness, we tried to shake off the feeling of unease. After all, we were just here to have fun. As the night wore on, Bob's presence grew more intrusive. He hovered near our lane, offering unsolicited advice on our bowling technique and peppering us with awkward small talk. Every interaction sent a shiver down my spine, a primal instinct warning me of the danger lurking beneath his facade. But it wasn't until he crossed the line that my discomfort turned to fear. As I stepped up to take my turn, Bob reached out and grabbed my wrist, his touch clammy and unwelcome. I recoiled instinctively, but his grip remained firm, his eyes boring into mine with a chilling intensity. Let me help you with your form, he said with a sickening smile, his words dripping with false sincerity. I wanted to scream, to push him away, but fear rooted me to the spot. I glanced at my friends, their expressions a mirror of my own terror, but none of us dared to confront the stranger looming over us like a predator. It was a relief when we finally managed to escape his clutches, cutting our night short and fleeing to the safety of pizza. But little did we know, the encounter with Creeper Bob was only the beginning of a nightmare that would haunt us for nights to come. Chapter 2 The Pursuit As Josh and I made our way home from the bowling alley, the chill of the night air seemed to seep into our bones, matching the unease that gnawed at our insides. The memory of Creeper Bob's unsettling presence lingered like a shadow, casting a pall over our once carefree evening. Did you see that? Josh's voice broke the silence, his eyes darting nervously to the darkened street behind us. I followed his gaze, my heart skipping a beat as I spotted the familiar shape of Bob's SUV lurking in the shadows, like a predator lying in wait. Is that? I began, but Josh cut me off with a grim nod. Yeah, it's him, he muttered, his voice thick with dread. Panic surged through me as the reality of our situation sank in. We quickened our pace, the rhythmic sound of our footsteps echoing in the empty street, each step a desperate bid for escape. But Bob wasn't about to let us slip through his fingers so easily. As we reached the intersection, his voice sliced through the silence like a knife, dripping with false concern. Hey, kids, need a ride home. He called out, his words laced with an unsettling mixture of sweetness and malice. Josh and I exchanged a wary glance, our instincts screaming at us to run, to flee from this stranger who seemed to have marked us as his prey. No thanks, we're good, I managed to choke out, my voice trembling with fear. But Bob wasn't about to take no for an answer. His persistence was unnerving, his gaze fixed on us with a chilling intensity that sent shivers down my spine. It's not safe for you to be out here alone, he insisted, his tone taking on a sinister edge but we weren't about to fall for his ruse. With a shared glance, Josh and I broke into a run, our hearts pounding in our chests as we raced towards the safety of home. As we reached the sanctuary of my doorstep, a sense of relief washed over me, mingled with a lingering sense of dread. The encounter with Creeper Bob may have ended for now, but I knew that his shadow still loomed large, a constant reminder of the darkness that lurked just beyond our reach. Chapter 3. The Confrontation the eerie silence of the night hung heavy around me as I crept through the darkness of my backyard, my senses on high alert for any sign of danger. Every rustle of the leaves seemed to echo like a warning, every shadow a potential threat lurking in the darkness. And then, just as I reached the safety of my back door, I heard it, the sound of footsteps behind me, growing closer with each passing second. Panic surged through me as I whirled around, my heart pounding in my chest as I braced myself for whatever horror awaited me. Before I could react, a hand clamped over my mouth, 
cutting off my scream before it could escape. I struggled against my attacker, my mind racing with fear and confusion as I fought to break free from their grasp. But then, as if by some miracle, I managed to break free, racing into the safety of my home with adrenaline coursing through my veins. I called out for my dad, my voice raw with panic as I recounted the horrors of the night. Dad, there's someone out there, I gasped, my words tumbling out in a frantic rush as I struggled to catch my breath. My dad's face darkened with anger as he listened to my tale, his features set in a grim mask of determination. Without a word, he reached for the phone, his fingers flying over the keypad as he dialed the emergency number. But even as we waited for help to arrive, I knew that the danger was far from over. Creeper Bob may have been gone for now, but his presence still loomed large in my mind, a constant reminder of the darkness that lurked just beyond our doorstep. As the minutes stretched into hours, the night seemed to stretch on endlessly, each moment filled with a tension that hung heavy in the air. And then, finally, the sound of sirens pierced the silence, signaling the arrival of help at last. Relief flooded through me as the police officers burst through the door, their voices a comforting reassurance in the darkness. We're here to help, one of them said, their voice a soothing balm to my frayed nerves. With their assistance, we searched the house from top to bottom, every shadow scrutinized for any sign of danger. And then, just as we were about to give up hope, we heard it, the sound of movement coming from above. Heart pounding, I led the officers to the attic door, my hands shaking as I reached for the latch. With a creak of rusty hinges, the door swung open, revealing the darkness beyond. And there, illuminated by the soft glow of my phone's flashlight, sat a figure in a rocking chair, their eyes fixed on me with a chilling intensity that sent shivers down my spine. Who are you? I demanded, my voice trembling with fear as I confronted the intruder. But the figure remained silent, their gaze unyielding as they stared back at me with an intensity that sent a chill down my spine. And as the police officers moved in to apprehend the intruder, I couldn't help but wonder, who was this person, and what did they want with me? The answers remained shrouded in mystery, a chilling reminder of the darkness that lurked just beyond the safety of my home. Story 2 Chapter 1 The Plan Friday nights were our canvas, and mischief was our paint. Our gang of delinquents, consisting of me, Chip, Jason, Rowan, and Anish, ruled the suburban streets with an iron fist wrapped in the allure of rebellion. We were the kings of chaos, always seeking the next thrill to satisfy our insatiable hunger for excitement. As we lounged in Rowan's dimly lit basement, the stale air heavy with the scent of stale beer and lingering smoke, the idea struck like lightning. Anish, the master persuader, spun a tale of adventure that captivated our imaginations. Why don't we break into the bowling alley after hours? Anish suggested, his voice dripping with excitement. The idea was met with a chorus of cheers and eager nods. The prospect of exploring the deserted lanes under the cover of darkness ignited a fire in our souls, and before we knew it, the plan was set in motion. Rowan, do you still have that spare key? I asked, my voice brimming with anticipation. Rowan, always the wildcard of the group, grinned in response. Of course I do, he said, his eyes glinting with mischief. Consider it our ticket to adventure. With a sense of excitement coursing through our veins, we gathered our supplies and prepared to embark on our illicit journey. The thrill of the unknown beckoned us forward, promising a night we would never forget. As we slipped into the night, the darkness enveloped us like a cloak, and the thrill of the forbidden pulsed through our veins, propelling us towards our destiny. Chapter 2 Into the Darkness Under the Shroud of Night we moved like shadows, slipping through the deserted streets towards our destination. The bowling alley loomed before us, its neon lights extinguished, its once vibrant facade now cloaked in darkness. But to us, it was an invitation to adventure, a challenge to be conquered in the name of rebellion. With hearts pounding and adrenaline coursing through our veins, we slipped inside, the silence of the empty lanes echoing in our ears. The air was thick with anticipation as we ventured deeper into the belly of the beast, each step a testament to our audacity. But as we delved deeper into the bowels of the alley, a sense of unease began to settle over us like a suffocating fog. Strange noises echoed through the empty corridors, each sound a chilling reminder of the darkness that lurked just beyond our reach. Did you guys hear that? 
Chip's voice cut through the silence, his eyes darting nervously to the shadows that danced along the walls. Anish chuckled, his bravado masking the tremor in his voice. Relax, it's probably just the wind, he said, his words failing to dispel the tension that hung in the air like a thick fog. But despite his attempts to dismiss our fears, the unease lingered, a silent companion that followed us as we ventured deeper into the darkness. As we rounded a corner, the darkness seemed to grow denser, swallowing us whole in its suffocating embrace. Strange shapes loomed in the shadows, each one a silent sentinel, guarding its secrets with stoic indifference. But it wasn't until we reached the basement that the true horror of our situation became apparent. The air was heavy with the stench of decay, and strange noises echoed through the empty corridors, each sound a chilling reminder of the darkness that lurked just beyond our reach. Guys, I felt like this, Jason's voice trembled with fear as he peered into the darkness, his eyes wide with apprehension. Anish scoffed, his bravado waning in the face of our growing unease. Don't be such a wuss, Jason, he said, his voice lacking its usual confidence. But despite his attempts to bolster our courage, the darkness seemed to press in on us from all sides, a silent threat that whispered of unseen dangers lurking in the shadows. And as we ventured deeper into the bowels of the alley, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were not alone, that something sinister lurked just beyond the edge of our reality. Chapter 3. Confronting the Unknown The darkness pressed in around us like a suffocating blanket, our hearts pounding in our chests as we ventured deeper into the bowels of the alley. Strange noises echoed through the empty corridors, each one a chilling reminder of the horrors that lurked just beyond our reach. But despite our growing sense of unease, we pressed on, driven by a morbid curiosity that refused to be quenched. As we rounded a corner, the darkness seemed to deepen, swallowing us whole in its suffocating embrace. And then, just as our courage began to falter, we saw it, a figure emerging from the shadows, its presence sending a chill down our spines. It was a man, his eyes wild with madness, as he lunged towards us with a guttural cry. Panic surged through me as I stumbled backwards, my heart pounding in my chest as I struggled to comprehend the nightmare unfolding before my eyes. With a cry of terror, we turned and fled, our footsteps echoing through the empty corridors as we raced towards the safety of the exit. But even as we escaped the clutches of the deranged individual, I couldn't shake the feeling that the darkness would always follow us, a constant reminder of the horrors that lurked just beyond the edge of our reality. As we burst into the cool night air, gasping for breath and hearts still racing, we knew that we had narrowly escaped a fate worse than death. But as we caught our breath and the adrenaline began to fade, a sense of unease settled over us like a heavy fog, whispering of the darkness that still lingered just beyond our reach. Did you see that thing? Jason's voice trembled with fear as he clutched at his chest, his eyes wide with terror. Anish nodded, his bravado fading in the face of our harrowing encounter. Yeah, that was messed up, he muttered, his voice lacking its usual confidence. But despite our shared terror, there was a sense of relief in knowing that we had escaped with our lives intact. And as we made our way home in the cold light of dawn, I couldn't help but wonder what other horrors lurked in the darkness, waiting to be unleashed upon the unsuspecting world. Story 3 Chapter 1 A Night at the Lanes Friday nights were our sanctuary, a chance for Rebecca and me to escape the monotony of everyday life and revel in the simple joy of each other's company. Our ritual of spending Friday evenings at the local bowling alley had become a cherished tradition, a time for laughter, friendly competition, and shared memories. As we stepped through the doors of the bowling alley, the familiar sights and sounds enveloped us like a warm embrace. The neon lights cast a colorful glow over the lanes, and the sound of rolling balls and crashing pins filled the air with a symphony of excitement. Rebecca and I claimed our usual lane, the anticipation of the night ahead sparking a playful twinkle in our eyes. We slipped on our rental shoes with practiced ease, the familiar routine bringing a sense of comfort amidst the bustling energy of the alley. Ready to show me how it's done, Rebecca teased, her smile infectious as she picked up her bowling ball. I chuckled, rolling my eyes playfully. You know I'm always up for a challenge, I replied, matching her smile with one of my own. As we settled into our game, the cares of the outside world melted away, replaced by the simple pleasure of sharing a moment with the person I loved most. With each roll of the ball and each strike or spare, our laughter echoed through the alley, 
a testament to the bond we shared. But as the night wore on, a sense of unease began to creep over us, like a shadow lurking just beyond the edge of our consciousness. It started with a faint scratching sound, barely audible over the din of the alley, followed by an eerie silence that seemed to settle over the lanes like a heavy fog. Rebecca paused mid-throw, her brow furrowing in confusion as she glanced around the empty lanes. Did you hear that? She asked, her voice tinged with uncertainty. I shook my head, trying to dismiss the sound as nothing more than the creaking of old machinery. Probably just the sound of the lanes settling, I reassured her, though the unease lingered in the back of my mind. But as the night wore on and the strange noises persisted, our sense of unease only intensified. Little did we know, our night was about to take a turn for the truly bizarre. Chapter 2. The Haunting Sounds The echoes of our laughter faded into an uneasy silence as the scratching sounds persisted, each one sending a chill down our spines. Rebecca and I exchanged nervous glances, our mirth replaced by a creeping sense of apprehension. What do you think that is? Rebecca whispered, her voice barely audible over the eerie silence that now enveloped the alley. I shrugged, trying to mask my own unease with false bravado. Probably just some rats or something, I replied, though the words sounded hollow even to my own ears. But despite my attempts to reassure her, the scratching sounds only grew louder and more persistent, each one sending a shiver down my spine. And then, just as I was about to dismiss the noises as nothing more than a figment of my imagination, I heard it, a faint creaking coming from above, like someone rocking back and forth in an old wooden chair. Rebecca's eyes widened in alarm as she glanced upwards, her gaze fixed on the rafters above. Did you hear that? She asked, her voice trembling with fear. I nodded, my heart pounding in my chest as I strained to listen for any sign of movement. It sounds like it's coming from the attic, I replied, my voice barely above a whisper. A sense of dread settled over us like a heavy fog as we made our way towards the stairs that led up to the second floor. Each step seemed to echo through the empty alley, a silent testament to the fear that now gripped us both. As we reached the top of the staircase and pushed open the door to the attic, the sight that greeted us sent a chill down my spine. There, bathed in the soft glow of the moonlight filtering in through the window, sat a figure in the rocking chair their eyes fixed on us with a chilling intensity that sent shivers down my spine. Rebecca gasped in horror as she stumbled backwards, her hand trembling in mine. Who, who are you? She stammered, her voice barely above a whisper. But the figure remained silent, their gaze unyielding as they stared back at us with an intensity that sent a chill down my spine. With a sense of dread creeping over me, I knew that we needed to get help, and fast. Chapter 3. Confronting the Stranger Fear gripped us like a vice as we stood frozen in the doorway, our eyes locked on the figure in the rocking chair. The stranger's gaze bore into us with an intensity that sent shivers down my spine, their features obscured by the darkness of the attic. Who are you? I demanded, my voice trembling with fear as I took a cautious step forward. But the figure remained silent, their eyes never leaving mine as they continued to rock back and forth in the chair. Rebecca's hand tightened in mine her grip vice-like as she stared at the intruder with wide-eyed terror. We need to get out of here, she whispered, her voice barely audible over the pounding of my heart. I nodded, my mind racing as I tried to come up with a plan. With a sense of urgency, I led Rebecca back downstairs, our footsteps silent as we made our way to the phone in the kitchen. With trembling hands, I dialed 911, my voice shaking as I recounted the horrors of the night to the dispatcher on the other end of the line. Every word felt like a struggle to get out, my throat constricted with fear as I tried to convey the urgency of our situation. Within minutes, the sound of sirens pierced the silence, signaling the arrival of help at last. As the police officers burst through the door, their voices a comforting reassurance in the darkness, Rebecca and I felt a wave of relief wash over us. With their assistance, we searched the house from top to bottom, every shadow scrutinized for any sign of danger. But as we reached the attic door, a sense of dread settled over me like a heavy fog. With a creak of rusty hinges, the door swung open, revealing the darkness beyond. And there, illuminated by the soft glow of the flashlight, sat the intruder, their eyes wide with madness as they lunged towards us with a guttural cry. With a cry of terror, we turned and fled, 
our footsteps echoing through the empty corridors as we race towards the safety of the exit. But even as we escaped the clutches of the deranged individual, I couldn't shake the feeling that the darkness would always follow us, a constant reminder of the horrors that lurked just beyond the edge of our reality.